Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. We have new information tonight as crews are currently searching for a body in Detroit Lakes after a report of a missing man in the water earlier this afternoon. Detroit Lakes officials have been on scene for several hours off of West Lake Drive. That's where we find Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie with the latest. Courtney? Yeah, Katie, just just an absolute heartbreaking night. We've been able to learn a lot about what unfolded this afternoon here at the lake. I just talked to the sheriff. Here's what happened around four o'clock. Three young men went out onto the lake on some kind of a floatable device. The sheriff wasn't sure some kind of canoe. He said eventually it capsized and one man went under and never came back up. Immediately, his two friends called the police. Now, the body that we are looking for is that of the 23-year-old man who went underwater and never came back up. Now, they've been searching since about 4 o'clock. It's now 10 o'clock, so we're going on six hours here. And the search isn't stopping tonight. They're going to be out there into the overnight hours. Not the diving team, but they will be back early tomorrow morning. And they said that they aren't going to be able to shut down the lake, but the sheriff is asking that if you can stay away from the lake into the overnight hours and into tomorrow so that they can do their job and find this body. Katie. All right. Thank you, Courtney, for that live report. Stick with Valley News Live as we continue to follow this developing story. Minnesota's Department of Health is reporting another 924 confirmed cases of COVID-19, along with eight new deaths linked to the illness. The death toll is at 1,648. In North Dakota, 181 new cases and two more deaths have been confirmed. The death toll now sits at 112. For the complete list of numbers, visit the Valley News Live app. President Donald Trump is taking the lead on new coronavirus relief efforts. Today, the president signed a series of executive orders at his New Jersey golf club, which the White House says will help Americans suffering during the pandemic. However, it's unclear whether the president even has the legal power to do it. Chris Pallone reports. At an event billed as a signing ceremony for coronavirus relief executive orders, President Donald Trump launched a lengthy attack against his political rivals, including his November opponent, former Vice President Joe Biden. Biden is totally controlled now by the Bernie Sanders left wing of the party, and in fact, he's gone further left than Bernie Sanders ever dreamt of going. The president's tirade in front of an audience of paying members at his New Jersey golf club came before he signed executive orders, which he says will, among other things, cut payroll taxes, stop people from being evicted from their homes, cut interest rates on student loans, and give the jobless an extra $400 a week in unemployment benefits. For this reason, I'm taking action to provide an additional or an extra $400 per week in expanded benefits, $400, okay? The question, is it legal? I think when it's talking about delaying the collection of taxes or delaying the repayment of student loans, the president does probably have the power to do that because he's not expending new dollars. The president's action comes on the weekend. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the U.S. surpasses 5 million and the number of dead 162,000. And it's against the backdrop of several events which have health officials fearing further spread of the virus like more U.S. districts heading back to school. And this in South Dakota, where hundreds of thousands are descending on Sturgis for its annual bike rally, with no mandatory mask order or social distancing. You just be careful. You can't, you can't not live life. Democrats question whether the president's actions are legal and accuse him of creating a diversion to boost his re-election effort. They are playing politics at a time when the country desperately needs real help. Uh, not showmanship uh, at Trump's New Jersey golf club. More division and delay as Americans suffer. The House of Representatives passed a new $3 trillion coronavirus relief package back in May. The Senate has not acted on it. A Minot man was arrested Friday and charged federally for assaulting federal officers. 35-year-old Jalmer Spotted Bear is accused of assaulting two female correctional officers in March. According to court documents, the two officers are associated with the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the three affiliated tribes. Spotted Bear is charged with two counts of assaulting and resisting a federal officer. 
Officials have released the name of the man taken to the hospital after a motorcycle crash on Interstate 94. A Freightliner was going east when a motorcycle driven by 36-year-old Robert Ziegler of Frazee got on the freeway. Ziegler entered the traffic and hit the trailer of the semi, causing him to lose control. Ziegler was taken to Essentia Hospital for serious injuries. If you're looking for a fun and safe way to get out of the house and meet new people, this might be for you. The community gardens of Fargo have six different locations. You'll be planting, raking, and tending to the food growing in the garden. All of the food is donated to those in need or sold at markets. For volunteers, they say it's a way to serve others in the community. I love service and I know that if, when Jesus Christ was on earth he spent his whole time serving others and so as missionaries that's something that we really seek out is opportunities to serve other people and uplift them and so I'm really grateful for the opportunity I've had to serve in the gardens and to get to know people and help in the next market is Tuesday off of 25th Street near Hope Lutheran Church in Fargo from 2 to 6. We have the details on our website. Download the VNL News app. Cars and Cures took over the Capitol Building parking lot this afternoon to raise money for the Bismarck Cancer Center. One car owner rebuilt his dad's 1996 Camaro after he passed away from lung cancer in 2016. Tracy Kofer says having the car makes him feel like his dad is by his side. I'm a mechanic because of him. I like cars because of him. I've always been a car guy, but... This is the one common thing me and my father had. Kofer says he hopes people will look at the car and think about getting a checkup. An event organizer says they hope to raise around $10,000 for the cancer center.